1,200 pounds. But let's watch him run. 1920 coming up, and with it, a challenge race in Canada against J.K.L. Ross's Sir Martin. There's an $80,000 purse in the offing, and Jackie Comer is astride man of war as the gallant horse waits to go to the post. And there they go. Man of War is off to an early lead on a fast track. The finish with Sir Barton outclassed so badly he can't be seen. This was Man of War. It's 1918, and United States Food Administrator Herbert Hoover inaugurates a program to enlist America's youth in a farming movement. These pictures you are watching, showing students volunteering to work the soil to raise additional crops, were duplicated in World War II, when victory gardens came into existence. All over the country, planting was begun, and in Fresno, California, the campus became a war garden. Hoover's plan for planting vegetables bears fruit. Step up and meet one of America's greatest comic strip artists of the 20s, the creator of the famous Barney Google and Spark Plug. This is Billy DeBeck. You've enjoyed this fellow's work ever since you can remember. He's the man responsible for the lovable Jigs and Maggie in bringing up father, George McManus. The artist is also a collector, walking sticks being his favorite. McManus raises a uh, uh, cane. Doesn't this make you feel old? Yes, it's Shirley Temple, shown with her mother and Urban S. Cobb, just after she'd made pictures like Stand Up and Cheer and Little Miss Marker. This was Shirley Temple when those tiny hands held America's heart. Sensational pictures of a tidal wave in Paris. Unexplained causes churn the Seine River into a wild force that challenges the banks of the world-famous waterway to hold it in check. These spectacular shots were made even as floodwaters increased their efforts to break loose. Watch them. As immediate danger lessens and the tidal wave subsides, Parisians line the banks of the Seine to see the waters back up. Nature rages, but ultimately relents. Dirigible to fly the Atlantic. It's July 6th, 1919, and the R-34, which left Scotland July 2nd, arrives over Mineola, Long Island. Despite violent storms en route and severe atmospheric disturbance over Boston, the ship arrives on Long Island after having announced she'd land at Boston. With no radio to inform ground crews of its intention, British Major Pritchett parachutes to Earth to make preparations for landing the history-making airship. The R-34 carried 4,900 gallons of petrol and covered 3,200 miles in 108 hours and 12 minutes. But after her great adventure, still must be brought to the ground. With the United States Navy's C-4 as convoy in the background and Major Pritchett's instructions as a guide, the R-34 is landing. Ropes are released and ballast thrown out of the ship as it descends on Roosevelt Field. Under command of Major G.H. Scott, the R-34 had capacity for 30 officers and men and boasted the first transatlantic stowaway, William Ballantyne, a crew member who had been stricken from the roll to lighten the ship. This is the R-34, first lighter than air ship to span the ocean. And now, safely anchored, it attracts the curious. for special honors is Major Scott, who guided the dirigible, and had as his guest on the R-34, U.S. Navy's Commander Lansdowne, later to lose his life in the Shenandoah disaster. This, however, is a moment of triumph for the crew of the airship and for the dirigible itself, the history-making R-34.
dress ensembles from the 20s. Two unusually flattering riding outfits flank an afternoon two-piece sports outfit on the left, a duvetine wraparound on right. Satin for evening, with all curves taboo for the time being. Decollete and cocktail creations. The model on the right is particularly fetching. Model for lady in the morning. Chic pajama outfit, matching mules and brocade negligee, trimmed with fur at the neck, cuffs, and hemline. Now that's not too bad or too different from present day styles, is it? Same girl, but a change of scene and of time. It's afternoon now, and she's wearing a cloche hat with a white band. Short skirt is accordion pleated, and the white jacket features a dark belt. The time grows later, and our friend goes in for a brocade gown with off-the-shoulder neckline. Chiffon sleeves with lace cuffs add a smart note to the ensemble. This pleased the men then, but it's not so gay today. Italy at 15 set six world records in one day. The scene is Brooklyn and the girl who is to conquer the English Channel is swimming at Brighton Beach. Miss Italy in lane two captures her first contest, beating Helen Rainwright and Hilda James. In the freestyle, the young swimming stalwart is all by herself. She swam distances from 300 yards to 500 meters, set the six world records, and looks fresh enough to do it all over again. From the pool to the court, Lacoste and Richards in Paris, 1925. The French and American stars battle it out, with Lacoste finally succumbing to the hard-hitting U.S. star. A leading net notable in the 20s, Vinnie Richards. Now for a race you'll remember. A two-mile clash pits Glenn Cunningham against Don Lash in 1939. And Cunningham grabs the lead. Watch Lash's hand as he almost loses stride. See that? Now for the finish of the race. It's two miles, remember, and Lash is famous for his kick. The spurt that comes at the end of a grueling match and breaks the heart of your opponent. There it comes, but Cunningham matches it stride for stride and wins. Don Lash second, Greg Rice third. Greatest middle distance runner of his time, this is Glenn Cunningham. CMQ in Havana, Cuba. The revolution is over and the studio is jammed with newspaper photographers, armed guards, studio technicians, armed rebel fighters. From this studio in Havana, you are about to see Fidel Castro, leader of the successful rebel forces who overthrew the dictatorship of General Batista. And now by television tape recording, you will see Fidel Castro Face the Nation. Now here is the moderator of Face the Nation, CBS News correspondent, Stuart Nobins. The revolution in Cuba has thrown out the Batista administration and it has installed a provisional government. That was the first step. Now the revolution must consolidate itself the government must be organized to cope with the many, many problems that now face this country. The man upon whose strength all this depends is Dr. Fidel Castro, who is here now to face the nation. Dr. Castro, the American people hope that a true democracy will emerge here in Cuba. We want to ask you about your personal plans and about what you hope for your country. In order to do that, we're here in this special edition of Face the Nation, 
and the gentleman I want to identify on your side is there to help you with language if you need it, and I'm sure you won't. May I introduce our panel of newsmen, Dr. Castro? Jay Mallon of Time Magazine, Richard Bate of CBS News, William L. Ryan of the Associated Press, who will ask the first question. Mr. Ryan? Dr. Castro, the recent events in Cuba have been full of hope for the Cuban people. But is this hopeful revolution now being threatened by some person or persons within the revolutionary organizations? Our interpreter on this special edition is Mr. Jack Skelly, who has lived here in Cuba for 25 years, a former UP correspondent in Washington. Well, I'm going to tell you. The government, the president of Cuba now is consolidated in the power and have the help of the biggest movement and of the public opinion. That is the 26th of July. Yes, movement, and many other and other organizations. And he is sure in power. The only thing worrying me is, are, is some group that is keeping um, and I ask it, I spoke to the polling opinion and I ask why to give ban if there is no tyranny. I ask it for they uh, give the arm, turn the arms again and they said they are going to to give the arm. Doctor, just is, there is no difficult at all because public opinion in Cuba is now very strong and with a tremendous force. Nobody is enough powerful to op opposite now the public opinion of the free country of Cuba. Doctor, Doctor. just for clarification, this group that has been carrying arms, is this the student group? The university group? Not the university group, because the students are almost... How do you missing. identify this group, Doctor? A group that uh, several years ago they were students. Now they, now they are not students. And not all day. Two or three D leaders that I am surely that they are men, they men are not going to follow themselves. They this is the group of Fore Chamon. Yes, but Fore Chamon is going to be to fall in crisis, 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 in crisis. Yes, because the group is a group of young, idealistic, and uh, good men. Mr. Bate, is this, this the my same opinion. group? They cannot do anything at all. It will not uh, be another thing than the, a a world war. Dr. Castro, is this you know, the same group that? Not uh, call. Is this the same group, however, that uh, you spoke of the other night when you said someone had stolen some arms from an arsenal near Cuba? Yes. Have you gotten those arms back? Yes, they said they were to turn back, and they cannot do anything because of you have all the mother of Cuba has said that it's not necessary that they send a soldiers to take our soldiers to take the arms because they have decided to go and to take the arms. That is what the mothers of Cuba say. You know, and they cannot do anything. Public opinion is powerful in Cuba, and nobody can opposite public opinion in this time. What they do is to be with the public opinion that have a confidence in our movement and in myself and in the provisional government. That is why I think that we will have no trouble. You know why? Because we have the power, the forces, the army forces, and we are not, we are near the president. We help the president without condition. The civil government is sure. He gives orders to us, and we are decided to obey the orders because we are men of law, Doctor. not professional of the army. Mr. Mallon? Is it clear? Yes, yes. Do you believe yes. that the public opinion will hear me in the United States and not understand me? I am sure they will, Dr. Castro. I, I am not very much sure. Of your English, you mean. <laughs> I think it's improved. 
for next time. Very good, but you're doing very well now. Mr. Mallon? Dr. Garcia, do you believe that the De Victoria will surrender these arms uh, voluntarily? No. They are men that are good men, young men, will not do anything against the revolution. And they, m many of them think in good, well, and love the revolution and the country. There are two or three leaders, small leaders, with big ambitions. That is all. And not difficult at all. You can be sure that will not be difficult. I know quite well my country. I know quite well my people. I know quite well the public opinion. I, I know that who rule in Cuba now, who gives orders now in Cuba, is the public opinion with the free press as the vehicle. As the, 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 the vehicle? Way, way. Yes. Uh, Dr. Castro. Uh, yes, <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Uh, just what are the ambitions of these leaders? Just what do they want specifically? Nobody knows. What they, what they want is to, to worry. To, <laughs> They was, they, what they want is something as name, and I suppose they, as they see the 26th July movement as the help of all the public opinion. You have seen, did you see yesterday the people? Dr. Castro. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people were in the street. They saw that. Those two or three leaders, and they cannot be happy. What they want is to... Give us headache. Give us headache. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Castro, headache. I think there's no doubt that your 26th of July movement is the best organized group and perhaps the largest group, but does that mean that you intend to run the government by yourself? Or will there be... Myself? Uh, not you, but your party. Will there be participation of other political not parties? Not participation, because the president wanted to design the, the majority of the minister, of the member of the government, he, he asked us to help him. He asked us so that we permit that our men take part, take part in the government. At the beginning, we were not interested. Well, what about the directorio, Dr. Castro? Will they also have positions in the ministers, in the ministry, in the cabinet? Well, the president... When, when we, we elected him, <coughs> it was without condition, you know. And what happened is this. If this small group, you give participation in two or three months, if they want, they say this is not good for anything, you give they, you give they participation, they use that to produce a crisis. It is better for the for the government, for the surely, and for the, the development the development of the of the provisional government, so that we have not possibility of crisis. You think you it know? is the purpose of the directorio to create a real crisis in Cuba so that they can take no. over power? Is that what you're saying? Two or three small leaders yes. that are trying to produce. Not, not to produce the Christ, are trying to play with fire, do you know? Yes. For they, that they will not go very far because nobody follow those kind of people. Dr. Castro, you, you said that yes. in... Uh, that you, is the truth. You Madam. said that in 18 months or so there will be free elections in Cuba. When yes. this time comes, will... Uh, the, will all political parties be allowed to run candidates in these elections? Yes, of course. All political parties, including the directorial. Of course, if we don't give free to all the political parties to organize, we are not a dem democratic uh, country. We have fought for the democracy here and, and for the free, for the freedom of our be? people. We don't want to stop and to put any difficulty to anybody. We believe in democracy. 
Why will it be necessary to wait 18 months before free elections can be held? Well, do you, do you think it is good for the Cuba now, when all the people what want is peace, when all the people that what want is that the government repair the mistakes and the the barbarity of the before government. Don't you believe that our country at least one year to work? Do you believe that between in the in the in the fight of the political party is it possible to do anything? If we give a free election tomorrow we win because we have almost all the people. We have now more people than in 18 years, Do because after, after, after 18 years, I'm sure many people are going to be tired Do you of feel me that? and of everybody, because people tire very, very fast. But do you feel that there would be That's trouble it. if free elections were held tomorrow in Cuba? Do you feel that you would rather have almost uh, over a year in order to uh, uh, consolidate things before free elections are held? Mm -hmm. I think it is good at about 18 months, not more and not less, because you know the political party need time for reorganize, reorganize, yes, and each, to work to make prop to make propaganda, propaganda. But Dr. Castro, what guarantees and are there then? After 18 months, what is the guarantee that there will be free elections after 18 months? Well, the public opinion in first place. Second place, our word. Third place, our intention that have been proved. Fourth thing, our, because we are men without interest. Are you considering uh, revising yes, the and, and five, because it is logic. What we win in not doing election. If we have the people, don't you believe we have the people of Cuba? Do you want to make a survey? Not at all. Okay. I, I'm, I you just have want to satisfy uh, my own curiosity in this respect. Uh, are you considering, for example, uh, revising the Constitution in any way to, to protect the rights which have been trampled on before? Why? Why there is, it is not necessary at all. It's not necessary. Our constitution, everybody in our country is happy with our constitution. Yes. To change the constitution now is to provocate, to provocate to difficulties. Provoke. Not, people is not going to be quiet. And what the country needs is that everybody have confidence. And we have said our constitutional law is the constitution of 1940. And everybody is happy and is sure and know what to do. Mr. Mellon, uh, will the uh, communist or a communist front party be permitted to participate in the elections? What? <coughs> what, I, what I think about that is this. The, uh, when the tyranny was falling, the country, they are, they, they are going to be the same right that were before 19, the 10th of March, 10, 1952. And what I think that I, I, this, that all the rights of the Constitution are ought to be respected. Respect. Are you afraid of the idea? Do you believe that the dem democratic man ought to be afraid of any idea? Dr. Castro, I you are a lawyer. Afraid. You are a lawyer, and I'm afraid I will have to act as a judge. We'd like you to answer our questions. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid no, of freedom at all. May I ask you a question, sir? As a lawyer, and as one who has spoken very eloquently about the civil rights that yes. must be guaranteed to the Cuban yes. people, how I do you explain... I will never be against any right. That is my thing in politics. Very I am good. not communist at all. But I will never be against any right. Well, may I ask you, sir, why is it when you have that attitude, which you obviously believe very strongly, why with that attitude have there been so many executions across Cuba 
without open free trials. <laughs>